This is part 53 of Blazor tutorial. ASP.NET Core Identity provides cookie authentication out of the box. In this video, we'll discuss how to integrate this cookie authentication in our Blazor application. Our first step is to scaffold ASP.NET Core Identity into our existing Blazor application. ASP.NET Core Identity provides user registration, login, logout, two-factor authentication, etc. out of the box. We discussed scaffolding ASP.NET Core Identity in part 51 of this Blazor video series. ASP.NET Core Identity Scaffolder added this identity area. Within this folder, we have all the related Razor pages and the source code files. Our next step to integrate cookie authentication is to add the related services. We do that in configure services method of the startup class. Add authentication. This method adds authentication services. As a parameter, we need to specify the default scheme. ASP.NET Core Identity writes a cookie with the scheme identity dot application. So we have to specify the same string as the default scheme. Otherwise, cookie authentication does not work as expected. We'll see this in action in just a bit. And then we call the method add cookie. As the name implies, this method adds the cookie services. Next, we need to add authentication and authorization middleware components to the HTTP processing pipeline. We do that in this configure method of our startup class. Next, we need a login link on the navigation menu. Navigation menu navmenu.reza is in the shared folder. So let's open this file. Our login link is going to be very similar to these other links. So let's make a copy of the edit link and change the text here to login and the icon to lock-locked. Finally, the href attribute value, that is the path to get to the login page. If we take a look at the login page scaffolded by the ASP.NET Core Identity Scaffolder, it is present in the Pages folder in the Account folder. So the login page is right here. So the full folder structure to get to this file is areas slash identity slash pages slash account. However, in the URL, these two folders, that is areas and pages are not required. So the relative path to get to this login page is slash identity slash account slash login. So we specify that as the edge of attribute value right here. With all these changes in place, let's run our project. There we go. We now have the login link. When we click on it, we are redirected to the ASP.NET Core Identity login page. We don't have a user account yet to log in, so let's register as a new user. Provide email, password, confirm password. Registration successful. Click this link to confirm your account. In a real world, we'll send a confirmation email to the provided email address. On our local machine, this is fine. This speeds up our development. So let's click this link to confirm our account. If we now take a look at ASP.NET users table, we have a row for the user that we just registered. Notice the email confirmed column, it is true. We can now use this email address and password to log in. So let's do that. Before we actually log in, let's launch browser developer tools by pressing F12. We are on the application tab and looking at the list of cookies. At the moment, we have two cookies, anti-forgery and MVC temp data provider cookie. We don't have the authentication cookie. Now let's actually log in and see what happens. We are logged in. We now have a third cookie, identity.application. This is the authentication cookie. And one important point to keep in mind here is the name identity.application. So the name here and the default scheme that we have specified right here must match. Otherwise, cookie authentication will not work as expected. So this authentication cookie is sent with every request by the browser to the server 
automatically. Looking at this cookie, the server knows the user is already authenticated. When we log out, we remove the authentication cookie. At the moment, we don't have logout functionality. We'll implement it in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.